Okay, now let's wrap up our discussion of impacts of um, microorganisms on energy uh, resources in the environment um, by talking about controls on the rate of methanogenesis. Now, in the previous section, uh, what I talked about as far as pathways of, of methanogenesis is relevant to any uh, methanogenic environment. But what I want to focus on here for controls on the rate, uh, I want to focus on unconventional natural gas reservoirs. Okay, so what are these unconventional natural gas reservoirs? Well, in conventional gas reservoirs, um, gas is basically produced in a separate source rock and then has migrated to that reservoir uh, where it's trapped for some reason or another. So that's what's illustrated up here. Okay, Unconventional reservoirs are those that require special recovery operations outside of those required for development of a conventional gas play. Okay, so in, in many cases they are both the source and trap of natural gas. Okay, so a good example of that is a gas-rich shale. Okay, the, the, the uh, gas is originating either from uh, microbial degradation or thermogenic processes um, from that organic matter that's in the shale, and then it's trapped there by um, mostly by adsorption to the organic matter that's present in that shale. Uh, tight gas sands are another example of an unconventional reservoir. Um, and then coal bed methane is, a, is another good example. Uh, coal, coal bed methane reservoirs. Okay, so um, one of the reasons that I get excited about these unconventional gas reservoirs is because the possibility exists that we might be able to enhance gas formation within them. They certainly contain uh, uh, organic matter, and we know that um, it can be at least partially degraded under anoxic conditions. So there's food there. And when we look, uh, almost every time we check, we find that they also contain living microbial populations that are capable of generating methane. And the list of these reservoirs that contain those is, is just growing all the time. Okay, so the food is there, the microbes are there. Um, we don't really know how rapidly they currently are producing methane. It's clear, however, uh, that they're not producing it nearly at nearly the rate at which we're pulling it out. Okay, the productive life of most unconventional gas wells is relatively short. Okay, in the Powder River Basin, for example, uh, in, in Wyoming, the productive life of wells is usually only about seven to eight years. Okay, here's an example from the uh, Antrim Shale in the Michigan Basin. You can see that um, methane. Uh, gas production increases pretty rapidly and then starts to, to tail off. Uh, within about a decade, it's, it's getting down to a low number. Now, if we could figure out how to enhance growth of methanogens, okay, that would potentially lengthen the lifespan of these wells, the productive life of these wells. And this would be a huge deal because we have massive unconventional gas resources right here at home. And our uh, use of them, our reliance on them, is expected to grow tremendously in the future. We have these huge reservoirs, and over the past decade or so, we've learned how to get that gas out in a cost-effective way. Okay. So understanding how to stimulate methane formation uh, in these reservoirs starts with a good understanding of what is controlling rates in the system. Okay. In other words, what factors are responsible for holding back these microbial populations to begin with? So this is the state of the science currently. We have uh, a lot to learn still, but uh, so far some of the findings that are out there make it clear that uh, salinity is a major control. It seems that these populations can be active in formations that contain brine, uh, but they have their limits. And this limit seems to correspond to a chloride concentration of about 3 molar. And to put that number into perspective, it's about five or six times the uh, chloride concentration of seawater. Okay, the availability of nutrients like phosphate can also have a, an effect on the rate of methane formation and is likely to be important in many reservoirs. This has been shown in experiments uh, with folks incubated samples of coal with formation water and uh, they did that with and without nutrient amendments and then measured the effect that that had on, on the rate and showed that uh, and, you know, in many cases, we could stimulate methane formation by providing nutrients. Um, accumulation of some organic compounds seems to have an, an inhibitory effect on growth of methanogens. 
Um, and this appears to be an accumulation of some long chain fatty acids as well as some aromatic compounds uh, that they don't seem to like. And then uh, fracture spacing is an important control in that it would affect fluid exchange rates and perhaps where within the matrix uh, that cells could exist. You know, they, they have to have a certain amount of pore volume. Of course, this is uh, also an important control on our ability to produce gas from these reservoirs, uh, regardless of, of how rapidly it's forming. <clears throat> Now, in addition to these controls, the composition of the microbial community is also clearly important. Uh, organic matter in these reservoirs has a very complex chemistry, and as such, it would uh, likely require several specialized groups for complete degradation of the organic matter to substrates that can then be used by methanogens. If uh, for some reason or another one of the groups, one of, one of these groups wasn't present or perhaps was ill-suited to uh, carry out one of the steps necessary to ultimately produce those substrates, it could limit the rate at which methane could form. Uh, in addition to that, the thermal maturity of organic matter also appears to be an important control. Uh, coal chemistry changes, uh, or carriage in chemistry changes dur during thermal maturation, and it seems that uh, it becomes increasingly difficult to degrade. Okay, so it's better to have low rank uh, carrageen. Um, and so this, this affects uh, not, probably not only the extent to which it can be converted to gas, but also um, how rapidly. Okay, so here's uh, just some images that show bituminous and uh, anthracite coal. All right, so I think that uh, it's probably safe bet that bacteria probably hold the key to understanding how to increase rates of methane formation in unconventional reservoirs. Remember that uh, bacteria are responsible for producing those relatively simple substrates that methanogens use to make methane. Okay, And um, those substrates uh, are, to my knowledge, never observed to be accumulating to high levels where you have living methanogens present. Okay, so this implies that basically the methanogens are eating the substrates as fast as they can be delivered and that it is um, one of the steps being carried out by those bacteria that is the rate limiting step. Okay? So I think this is going to be a, a really interesting area uh, for future research. Okay, so that pretty much sums up everything uh, I wanted to introduce in these online lectures for microbial impacts on energy resources and geological environments. I hope you enjoyed the lectures and I look forward to expanding on these uh, topics in class. Thank you for watching.